Hi, Chelsea. I'm Mariana Starr with Empowering Women Entrepreneurs to Succeed in Business. I'm in the Halloween spirit here. And it's great to, I'm so glad you took me up on the opportunity to get to know you a little bit with this Fempreneur interview. And so uh, thanks for asking. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought I'd start with what what was your interest in joining joining the group empowering women entrepreneurs to succeed in business? Let's just start there. Well, I am a woman entrepreneur entrepreneur and I have a business. So it sounded like, <laughs> it <laughs> like would a good be a very nice place to be. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, you know, growing um I know the term networking or network sounds a little bit, you know, cliche or opportunistic anymore, but you know, I growing a community of other people, you know, like-minded people is definitely of interest to, of interest to me and just being around other people that are in similar situations to me at the moment, you know, growing a business that's very different from a lot of other people's lives. So. Yeah. Especially now in this day and age with the pandemic mm -hmm. and it being so virtual and not in person. And I think a lot of people are struggling with the whole online thing, like not quite sure what to do, how to do it. <laughs> yeah. It's an adjustment for sure. Yeah. Yeah. How long have you been in the group? I think I've been in the group since maybe around May. Okay. April so a while. Yeah. Yeah. And why'd you take me up on the invitation for doing this fempreneur interview? Well, I always love uh, getting the word out about, I, I mean, you know, about what I do, but I guess that's probably why most people create a business is they're really passionate about something. I lost you. Uh oh, oh, my, ear, my ear pods died. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, you know, like I was saying, um, I, I'm sure most people start a business because they're very passionate about something. Um, uh, what I do, you know, I'm very passionate about health and healthcare and people feeling comfortable in their bodies and having accurate health and health information and feeling empowered around that. So, you know, is the there, people, was there a personal reason for that? Like oftentimes I find, and I don't know if you feel this way that we help work by helping other people, we're, we're actually helping ourselves that we had a journey, we had an experience, you had a healing crisis. So tell mm -hmm. me what got you into this line of work and then we'll go more into detail about what it is you've done, but tell us your personal journey and why this work is, you know, near and dear to your heart. Right. Yeah. And that's funny because that is something that I tend to say to my clients, you know, I became the person that I needed um, the most <laughs> when I was in crisis. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, I definitely had a healing crisis in my teens, you know, I had a couple of them, but, um, my big one was that I used to have seizures. Um, I wow. started having seizures around the age of six. Um, I would have had many more if my grandma wasn't just like a really great researcher and realized that they were low blood sugar related. So I was on this very restrictive diet for many years in my teens, which is a really weird time in your life to be on a very restrictive diet. Um, Were you hypoglycemic? Hypo, mm -hmm. yeah, chronic, yeah. Low, chronic low blood sugar. My words are escaping me today, but, um, but yeah, essentially if I ate sugar or even like fruit or um, simple carbs, like white flour, like stuff like that, I would, my blood sugar would spike and then drop so low that I would pass out and have a seizure. So, wow, scary. Mm, it was very scary. I pretty much lived in fear for like many years. Um, Wondering if you're going to die. Yeah. My life was defined by the appropriate amount of snacks that I had with me because <laughs> I often couldn't eat things that most people had or like that were common in school or whatever. So it was very like fear based, you know, and yeah. I also felt very uncomfortable in my body throughout, very foggy, very um, weak dizzy all the time, had a lot of trouble concentrating. So, um, but then, and yeah, so when I was 18, I actually figured out that I had a gluten allergy, but it was an autoimmune gluten allergy. So it, you know, <laughs> Hashimoto's. I, no, it, when I ate gluten, it, my body attacks the beta cells in my pancreas. 
So um, what's that condition called? So it's just an autoimmune reaction to gluten and the pancreas is where insulin comes from. So that's why yeah. that's the reaction that I had to gluten. Wow. Um, but yeah, you know, throughout that, and it ended up being such a simple solution. Like I never had another seizure again. I never had another issue with blood sugar after I cut out gluten. How and did you so guys simple. start to discover it though? I mean, because that could be frustrating. And, you know, I got oh. diagnosed with Hashimoto's back in July and it was a very flippant diagnosis with no guidance or treatment. I've had to do a lot of research on my own. I went oh, yeah. paleo immediately. It made a huge difference. I melted yeah. 23 pounds off um, and I'm still in the healing process of that. So what was yeah. the first turning point? Cause you said your grandmother, thanks to her, she learned. Um, so with the sugar, the, the, the seizures, and then with the gluten, what were the turning points of awareness for you in those? So my, I was very disconnected from it all when I was a kid, you know, but my grandma, she did a lot of research because she had very similar issues. There are a lot of people in my family who just didn't feel very well all the time. None of them had seizures like me. I definitely had the worst reaction, but they all just kind of felt malaised a lot of the time. So my grandma figured out that it was low blood sugar was what we were feeling. But then I was the one who figured out that it was low blood sugar because of gluten. Um, and yeah, I definitely don't think that gluten is just like this big um, blanket, you know, healing, um, <laughs> like eliminating gluten is like this big blanket right. like, healing thing. Um, there's very specific things. It's not the panacea people. for everything, right? Yeah, yeah, it's not. So, but for me, it was huge. Um, you know, I, the reason, the way that I found out, I mean, doctors did not help me at all. Like I had seizures and they did epilepsy tests and sleep studies and they came back normal and they were just like, well, bye. And we were like, but I still have seizures. And they're like, oh, that's you know? how it was with me with the Hashimoto's. I had to turn yeah. to groups and Facebook and books and online research, right. you know, you know yeah. um, I'll get to that in a second. Cause I have something to say about that as well. But the thing that ultimately helped me find that is that I started having a lot of gastrointestinal issues. Um, a lot of people think that when you have an issue with gluten, your stomach hurts all the time. It took me years before that was an issue, but when it was finally an issue, I looked pregnant just like all the time. I even, went all the to Target. Time. I even went to Target, like it was hard too. It was hard and distended. And I even went to Target and, um, I thought I might be pregnant. So I went and got a like pregnancy test wow. I remember I right in that, right in the bathroom in Target. Um, and I was like, okay, it's not that. So maybe it's a food allergy. So then I did an elimination diet, like a really strict one. And then one day I accidentally ate gluten and was like, so sick, so sick. So I was like, okay, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. And so cut that out and like everything fell off, um, you know, and then I had, you know, issues with adrenal fatigue, um, you know, other food allergies that came about because of the weakening of my, my gut lining and stuff like that. I worked with a naturopath and she helped me kind of like have a new body in four months. So after that, that's when I was like, I think I want to do this. Like, I think people need to know things like this. So, um, yeah, plus, yeah. you know, because you have the compassion and empathy, like, you know, what, what the transformation is and mm -hmm. you can go there with them. You, you, you know, you understand how they feel and that's going to make a big difference. I think that makes a bigger difference to me, knowing, like I just started with a functional medicine doctor. She's a chiropractor, but she specialized in this. And when I was researching her, the fact that she had allergy issues that were life-threatening and that her office manager assistant had thyroid issues, low thyroid issues, I said, okay, the, the, this is someone I could work with because they've felt physically, emotionally, they felt the frustration yeah, and they really understand. Yeah. So, yeah. and that's something that my mentor said to me too, you know, like when I, I showed interest in wanting to do what she did and, you know, was asking where she went to school and how she like learned what she learned. And she was like, you'd probably make a pretty good practitioner. Cause you've been through kind of a lot of things now. <laughs> Cause I had like a couple, you know, health crises, um, Cause later I had like over 30 food allergies and couldn't even eat food. 
um, a couple of years later after learning about the gluten allergy. Um, and so definitely went through some stuff which, like you probably make a pretty good practitioner because of that, because you had a lot of different experiences. So, um, you know, but speaking of her, she actually, and I've been under some really cool mentors. Like I had a mentor who, um, she had MS and she was a doctor, like an integrative, um, medicine doctor had the height of medical care at the hospital that she worked at. Um, everything kept getting worse. She was in a tilt recline wheelchair. She took things into her own hands, started like working with her mitochondria and her diet and making sure her body had everything it needed. And she was up and walking, riding her bike to work every day in a year. Yeah. And there's, there's a um, lot of research that supports like, um, with MS and neurological, um, issues and autoimmune yeah. that, gluten and um, a higher fat diet is better for the nervous system. And also oh, medical mind. marijuana, like medical CBD oil is very good for that. But so tell me a little bit about your certifications and, you know, how, how you started to get educated and getting on this path and what exactly it is that you do, Chelsea. Sure. Yeah. Because so you look vibrantly healthy now your skin you look like you're a good you. weight you look healthy and you know so are you feeling good where you're at right now in your life health wise I, um, there's definitely some things to keep working with like what I'm doing right now with like braces and stuff um that's actually addressing the root of why my symptoms were so much worse than my family's like a tongue tie you breathe through your mouth as a kid. When you breathe through your nose, it fortifies your immune system, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why I had the worst symptoms out of my whole family because my immune system was so lowered. So I'm working with this and then um, working really deeply with my immune system um, with a mentor of mine who's an organic chemist and actually knows so much about the immune system. It's really cool. Um, but yeah, I went to Trinity School of Natural Health. Um, I'm, I was trained as a naturopathic doctor in Texas, I call myself a holistic health specialist because that's just how it needs to be here. Um, but yeah, I'm board certified. So I'm a board certified holistic health specialist. Um, An HHP in California, right? Holistic yeah. health practitioner. Yeah. A naturopathic doctor, basically. Yes. I'm in North Carolina, so I can say whatever I want. <laughs> yeah, I used to. That's where my one of my mentors is. He's in Chapel Hill. Um, oh, yeah. There. I'm in Asheville. Okay. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Right there. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that's. So tell me days. like, what's your, what's your soulmate client and who do you enjoy working with and, and kind of what's your protocol, your program? So I work with mostly women with chronic skin, weight, and health issues to help them finally feel comfortable in their bodies um, without the use of drugs or surgery. So I practice functional medicine, functional wellness. Um, and really, you know, I work with people from skin issues to um, painful, heavy periods to, um, you know, I actually have some Hashimoto's clients. Um, well, we actually just realized that this poor girl was diagnosed with Hashimoto's, but doesn't have Hashimoto's. Um, so we're like digging deeper into like inflammation and like these other things. We think it's actually a secondary um, autoimmune issue with her. How so, did you determine she didn't have Hashimoto's? Through did testing. You do some she, lab work. Yeah, she had like her TPO level was a one. That's really oh. strange. TPO is usually in the hundreds. Um, her thyroglobulin was a little bit higher than the TPO. So it just wasn't consistent. And her scent, like she didn't have an event. Usually you have a Hashimoto's event where you go super high hyperthyroid at first when the, when the thyroid starts getting attacked. So she didn't have that either. So we were just like, why were you diagnosed as ha like Hashimoto's? Like why do doctors just like, they see anything in a body and they're just like, Oh, well, we're going to put you in this box. Yeah, I had a high TSH score and automatically I was branded with Hashimoto's. So we're going to be doing it with the functional medicine doctor. Okay. We're going to really dig in. And I don't care if it's Hashimoto's or whatever. The fact that in I, I do BHRT 
you know, um, compounding pharmacy, healthier hormonal regulation, which has been a godsend for me and changed practitioners from California to North Carolina. And, um, you know, my first visit with them was January of last year. And they didn't really tell me anything about my numbers. So I didn't know what the numbers meant or what they looked like. Right. But I kept the report. And then on this next visit, she starts throwing around this term Hashimoto's. She's a nurse practitioner. And I'm like, well, how do I know if I have it? And she goes, oh, you have it. And the only advice she gave me was get Isabella Wentz book. And, you know, she's an expert on Hashimoto's. It is a good, I, I got her 90 day protocol and I immediately started doing that, but she just based it off of a high TSH. Now I'd gone from January where it was at 985 to July where it went down to 413. So they haven't tested your antibodies like your TPO or your. No. And that's why I'm going to a functional medicine doctor because I'm a veteran. So I go to the VA and they won't, they don't go off protocol. So I found a functional medicine doctor and we're doing a stool and a whole blood panel. We're going to look deeply into thyroid, the gut, you know, adrenals, liver. My acupuncturist is thinking my spleen is like annihilated, you know, just burnt out really low in, and um, very uh, yin depleted. My stomach is, my liver is being a bully. It's beaten up on everybody, but I think there's something going on with my pancreas because, you know, and it's improved, but I think it's and different things are all connected. Yeah. 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 So I think, especially in a group like this, so women in general are your target market, but is there a niche because you, you don't want to be too general? Are there, is there like, if you're practice was filled with your dream client, who would that be? Hmm. So um, I work with a lot of people helping their digestion be more comfortable. I'd say that's been a focus for me recently. Um, There's some different gateways, you know, um, to coming into holistic medicine. And some of those are like people who are having trouble, like, being at a comfortable weight, there's usually something underlying and there are like a few different ones. And I'm very proficient at working with all of those, um, you know, digestive issues, like feeling uncomfortable with your digestion. There are a lot of different routes for that, but, you know, again, proficient in most of those, um, you know, as well as skin issues, um, those have their roots as well. They're different for everyone, but those are the kind of gateways. Mm. Um, where people come to see me, if that makes sense. And can people work with you virtually? If you have to do lab work and stuff, can someone work with you virtually? Like yeah. you're in, where do you, where are you located? I'm in Austin, Texas. You're in Austin, Texas. Yeah. I'm in Asheville, North Carolina. Let's just say I hadn't found someone already. And right. I meet you on this interview and go, oh, I need your help. Could we work together? Could we do labs and all that? And yeah, I'm fully telehealth enabled. I can work. I work with people in San Francisco, Michigan, Alabama, Virginia, right? Right now. on. All Georgia. right. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. You know, there are some good things that have come out of the pandemic in that the world and even resistant people to technology have ha- have been forced to embrace yeah. technology in order to stay connected. So many things are accessible now for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So if you were to shout a roof, you know, if you were on a rooftop and you were to shout your message for the whole world to hear and heed, or especially the women in this group, based on your own experience and your training and working with women, what would be that one piece of advice that you would love for all of us to really take to heart? If you're uncomfortable, do not settle for that at all. Um, If your body changed suddenly and you weren't necessarily doing anything differently, um, 
don't settle for that either. There's something happening. Um, don't wait until it's too uncomfortable <laughs> to manage. Um, and I think everyone should have someone in their corner that has very accurate health information, like root cause based information, you know, like looking for the root of what's going on and not treating the symptoms because Western medicine, they treat, they're very good for emergencies. Um, holistic medicine is better for chronic ongoing issues. So, um, you know, just like we have a tax person and just like we have a business coach and just like we have all these other things, like for some reason, our health seems to be the thing that we try to bootstrap and do all on our own when it is probably one of the most complicated things that exists. That affects everything. So, and that affects everything. It's the yeah. foundation for everything. So if there's something going on with your health, it's going to be going on with your business too. So yeah, I care. what I hear from your message is don't be complacent. Don't yes. just settle for that you've gained weight and and or that you your energy is low. What happened for me is have heartburn or like that, or that you're bloated or have heartburn or right. something like that. You might just think, oh, that's normal. But what happened for me is that Hashimoto's diagnosis, whether it's accurate or not, was a wake up call for me. And that got me on the path to reducing stress in my life. And then looking at all these things that I didn't think were related, like sleep and weight and energy and, you know, this or that. And realized, wow, maybe they are all related. And I don't have to just march along feeling, eh, I want to feel good. Yeah, that's the point, to thrive and, yeah. and feel great and be able to do the things that you want to do. And we have to be responsible for that. So if you're not feeling vibrantly healthy, if you've been putting up with that you have gas or you're bloated or you've put on weight or your energy is slowing down or if you have brain fog or skin issues and you're just, you've been tolerating that thinking there's nothing you can do about it, there is. If you wanna, and even if you've never felt this, our natural way of being is to be vibrantly healthy and whole and full of energy. Mm -hmm. then reach out to Chelsea. How do Jetter? Is that how you say Peter. it? Yeah. Well, Peter. Jete, but Jete. Peter. Jete. Mm -hmm. Chelsea yeah. Jete. And, you know, just comment under this video in the comments, get a conversation going with her. Um, you can tell she's not hard sell. She's real low key and, but she knows what it feels like. Um, maybe just talk to her and, and you guys just have a private conversation she just is here in the group to help women feel vibrantly healthy. And I'm so glad you're here, uh, Chelsea. I'm glad, very glad. And I'm glad you took me up on this offer to, to do this interview. Is there a particular offer or a package that you would like to say something about before we wrap up? Yes. Um, and just before I jump over to that, I had something come up for me while you were talking. Um, sure. But yeah, you know, even if you've been diagnosed with something, um, don't put yourself in a box, you know? Like I work with the mechanisms behind whatever the illness or diagnosis is. You're getting to I, the root cause. I tend to think of diagnoses as like a range and not like a box. It's like you, you can shift yourself out of that if you want. Um, genetics aren't, you know, our future... They're not the end all be all. Yeah, not exactly. Um, I guess about 85% of our genes, our genetic expression is based on environment. Um, it's not set in stone. So there's that. Um, but yeah, so packages, I do a um, three to four month program with people essentially um, because one off sessions just don't create the transformation that I know is right. possible for people. Do you so, have a complimentary like consult call, discovery call with people? Yeah, I do. Um, yeah, I love to see, make sure I'm the right person to help, um, see what's coming up for people. You know, if I know someone that that's more their wheelhouse, like I'm happy to refer and recommend as well. But yeah, I love being able for us to get a sense for each other. 
um, and just make sure, you know. It's a good fit, right? It's a good fit, exactly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I have a four month program um, that includes the first round of testing, the first initial therapeutic protocol, which is like seven to eight, you know, professional grade supplements, stuff like that. Um, I also allow access to me between sessions. So I have a messaging app with, um, with um, the, ca or the capacity for um, longer voice memos. So it's a really rich way to talk in between sessions because um, usually they're- Like a Voxer. Stuff. Exactly, it's Voxer, yeah. Yeah, okay, good. So. Excellent. Well, I'm glad we finally were able to connect because I know we tried once before or something, I think. And yeah. so I'm glad this worked for us. And God, what a pleasure. I'm so glad you're in the group. And I really, really respect and appreciate your work because I'm, you. I'm needing people like that right now. Because like you said, there's a limitation to Western medicine to get to the root cause and really analyze what's going on and mm -hmm. dig in deeper rather than just putting a Band-Aid on a broken leg. I want right. to take control of my health. And so I really appreciate the work you're doing, Chelsea. And it's been wonderful getting just a little glimpse at who you are. I hope we connect a little more. Yeah, and uh, thank you so much for yeah, taking you. the time to be with me today. Of course. All right, Chelsea Jete. Jete. Yeah, it's French. Okay. <laughs> She's French. Okay, everybody, who's next? Go out there and be amazing. Thanks, Chelsea. Thank Bye. You.